And I want to come back to one thing you'd mentioned, uh, cloud migration and, and going to the cloud. You know, uh, several years ago, um, when, when this was uh, beginning to be a top agenda item for CIOs and executives as, like yourself, uh, you know, everyone would be doing the cloud dance, right? It's like, we're moving to the cloud. We're, we're going to, you know, everything we have, we're going to, you know, there was headlines from big, big companies out there. Like, we're going to shutter all our data centers and we're going to be in the cloud. And it was like this, 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 you know, zero sum game. We're either not in the cloud or we're in the cloud. And, and so um, how is that, but how, you know, where were you several years ago? How are you thinking about it? How's that transformed? How's that uh, evolved? The thinking of moving to the cloud, what does that even mean? Yeah. So a few years ago, I'd say about three or four years ago, uh, my mind was the same. Let's move it all. We're going to move it all. And, you know, I didn't want my team to tell me um, why we couldn't. I wanted them to tell me how we could. And I was, uh, I was kind of pounding the table like, I don't want to hear that it's so hard. Let's figure it out. Uh, we, I want to move it all. Um, but as you start at least in everyone's infrastructure and the application stack is going to be different, right? But I think we're probably similar to a lot of other large enterprises, at least if they've been around a while, you're going to have a whole variety of services that you support, right? We've, we've said cloud first and we have that approach uh, since day four or five years ago. Um, and I think for new services that we deploy, we always look to cloud first. If we can buy a SaaS app, it's kind of in this rank order. If you can buy a SaaS app, you buy it. Uh, and if you can't buy it and you need to build it, uh, then you build it in cloud, right? You build it in cloud and you use the cloud tools. And depending on the type of service, you may build it in AWS, you may for like for us, for analytics, we build in Google. Uh, we've built some services in Azure. Uh, so we, we use it, so SaaS first and then kind of platform next. Um, but you know, any large enterprise probably has some old legacy stuff that you can't just get rid of. Um, we have an intent, we have legacy applications that kind of support our backbone of our business and our quote to cash processes, right? And while there's a desire to get those to cloud over time and we're working on programs to do that, it's gonna take multiple years to get those programs done and actually move those things out of our our uh, legacy data center. And I didn't want to, didn't want to wait five years and just accept that as well. We're just stuck. Um, so coming back to kind of your question is in my own thinking was move it all. Um, and even those I wanted to move uh, again, don't want to hear it. Let's figure it out. Well, as we started unpacking the, the different layers um, for us, what I found was there's certain con contractual uh, implications. If you move certain loads uh, to AWS, you may end up, as an example, I'm just using that as one example, um, but you may end up with vendors coming and seeking you pay them again for stuff that you already own uh, and have significant financial implications if you do so. And so when we peeled our, our layers and the apps apart, we realized that there are pieces we can move to cloud, uh, mostly like on the app and web tier layer, but there are other pieces that we can't for contractual reasons. And honestly, as we thought through, uh, dealt with this reality that we can't move at all, it started to realize that, you know, there's some pieces like the database, for example, we may not ever want to move. Um, and so we evolved from a put it all must go to cloud into what we call our kind of cloud smart strategy. And it's not implying that we're, we're so smart, uh, smarter than everyone else. It's just, we wanted to be smart about how we manage the, our own infrastructure and our own layers of the stacks, um, taking everything into account. Is there ways to get some of those pieces in? Probably, but when I got educated on the nuance, whether it be financial realities or you know, business benefits of not in some cases moving, that's it evolved from move it all to, to what we kind of call our cloud smart approach. Very, very interesting, uh, pragmatic um, approach, right? So you're looking at the realities of, hey, you know what? How we got into an engagement with software, a certain software vendor, the license structure uh, worked in on-premise. It wasn't so friendly to being on the cloud. That's a consideration, especially if you have a long-term deal uh, partnership. And then architecturally, if you've got a lot of data or databases and certain application integrations, et cetera, you got to be careful on 
yeah. So, so if, if with, with all these, uh, assuming a company's gone through this journey and, and is, is adopting and, and, and agrees to say, okay, let's be cloud smart, which I love that word, cloud smart. Um, how, do, how would you coach uh, another CIO in a thinking about how to be cloud smart? I'm just going to tell you again, thinking about not even if I'm an Equinix customer, uh, if I wasn't an Equinix customer and I realized like, wow, I really want to get to cloud and wow, I can't really put every component in the cloud. And, and again, well, if I put pieces in the cloud, but keep pieces on premise and I have to rely on the internet for connectivity, uh, the applications won't function. And then you may feel like, well, we're stuck. Uh, and, and this is where I think, you know, looking back three, it's really dates back three years ago. Plus we had identified, even though we were already in Equinix, uh, we identified a company at that time called Packet, who we have since acquired and is now evolved into a, a product that's generally available and expanding, I think rapidly, you know, in our, um, uh, edge metal product. And I think of that product as you know, for me, a really great first step, if you realize the power of cloud and you realize like not everything is going to go for whatever reason, um, I view the edge metal product as a great, I think that this product is going to serve and help lots of people get to Equinix because I think that it could be your first step one. If you're stuck in your own data center, you want to get to the to the, to the Equinix platform for a variety of reasons, you're sold. You know that you understand cloud, you understand hybrid, and I think most people do. Um, but you're like, how do I get there, right? Because everyone doing a similar role to me probably has similar constraints that I do. Uh, I have had and why I thought Packet at the time was so powerful and why I still believe in the uh, benefits of this edge metal um, platform is, you know, while you want to go and move to the cloud, you run an enterprise infrastructure, which is complex and has a lot of moving parts. You have a leadership, which expects you to manage within a budget and or minimally grow it or try to reduce it, right? There isn't endless amounts of money. And especially in today's world, uh, I think there's a tighter squeeze on economics than ever before. And, and so the power of the edge metal is it gives you a chance to get into Equinix and take advantage of all many of the benefits of cloud and get out of your data center while also not kind of um, breaking the bank, if you will. In our case, without using real numbers, just for the purpose of kind of demonstrating is like, we have a certain run rate to replace com server and infrastructure components on an annual basis, a certain amount of CapEx, right? And our infrastructure, because we've been successful and the company has done well, has only grown and grown and grown over the years. And so every year in our budgeting process, I'm kind of, what we do is we're not going to go ask for tons more money. We have to look at what components are up for um, that need to be replaced because they're four or five years old and you don't want to go on to maintenance because vendors then really gouge you on maintenance because they want you to refresh and buy new parts. Um, and the challenge is you only have X amount of dollars. You know, I think this is why it's hard for the initial movement to Equinix. This is my own theory on why an enterprise sales cycle is pretty long for us is this is the challenge. You have X amount of dollars. You can't let infrastructure uh, go out of um, where it doesn't run or function or you don't have support. You have a job to do. And yet you also need to then procure a cage and then procure equipment to put in that cage and then figure out how to migrate it all while those parts are moving. You know, like you're building a new plane while you're flying a plane and it's quite complex. Um, and what Edge Metal brings to the table is, um, you know, capital leasing is becoming more and more prevalent all over the place, not, in, not in just in this case, but Edge Metal gives you the opportunity to lease, a cap lease equipment, you know, in a capital lease model where, your annual run rate of X, you can get, if you go into a lease kind of uh, deal with, with uh, this edge metal product, you can get four X your annual run rate, right? Which means you get four times the equipment. In our case, we were gonna literally replace everything, um, have brand new infrastructure, uh, all server storage, everything brand new, not have to increase our run rate 
at all because it's uh, one fourth of the total cost over a four year lease. You still have the benefits contractually of owning the equipment because technically it's still yours. You own it uh, from a contract standpoint. Yet we didn't. We you don't need to procure the cage and go buy those pieces of equipment in a purchase model. Um, so to me, you know, if an enterprise that is knows they want to move to cloud, knows they want to be at, at an interconnection provider, and Equinix is the leader globally by far, I believe. Um, you know, this is, I believe, a powerful way uh, where you can get out of your data center without even having to know which piece do I want to put in which cloud. Well, this cloud, you don't really need to know that. You know that you need to, you want to figure that out. And you know, you probably want to get out of your own data center. Um, so with this type of model, you can lift and shift your infrastructure to a edge metal product, which is essentially your own, your own private infrastructure, but it's um, within an Equinix data center. And from there, you can take your time, really go as fast or as slow as you want to then look at your different types of applications, look at your different workloads, decide which workloads you want to put in which clouds, which are the easy candidates, they can just move, which ones are the more challenging, which may need some rework in order to be moved, and depending on you know your industry everyone's not the same but if there are certain components that you never want to move like in our case we we found some that we never want to move you can choose to leave those uh, and move the others but you've your step one you've gotten out of your uh your data center where you have to manage all of it uh, and it kind of accomplished a, a refresh at the same time and are able to keep it at least in our case we were going to keep it flat and, and I think the the other cool um, benefit of 